This is Gary Hudson on Folkstone Guitars and welcome again to the Truth Guitar Channel. Today I'm going to be refretting the Monoprice Les Paul knockoff guitar with jumbo stainless steel frets. And this is a bound fingerboard. I've already removed all the old frets and I put in five of the new frets already. I want to show you what's involved with just putting one fret in a bound fingerboard on one of these guitars. Just one. Alright, so what we have is the neck mounted to the neck jig. This is the neck jig that I built for refretting bolt-on necks. And I have my tools ready, have my fret wire ready. And this is jumbo stainless steel fret wire. This is the way I like to get it. Already radius to a 9.5 radius. And this is really some big, thick stuff, and it's pretty hard on tools. You're going to see today why a lot of luthiers don't like to mess with this stuff. But uh, it's the best. I mean, it's permanent. If you get a stainless steel refret, you don't ever need to have another fret job again. They, these frets just don't wear out, and they play just incredibly great. And uh, they make the guitar sound better. Uh, it sounds brighter, you got a lot more sustain. The, uh, the frets uh, never oxidize, they stay shiny. So we're going to show today what's involved in putting a fret in a bound fingerboard. Now, first of all, you notice there's a tang on the bottom of the fret. This is the barbed uh, piece of the wire that goes down into the slot and grips it. And uh, first of all, you have these ends of these, this fret wire is kind of kind of rough cut so we got to make those flush so we go over here to the diamond thread file and make that end nice and flush that's for starters once I've got it flush now I've got to grab my tang nippers. Now these are, these have gotten pretty dull. I've been using them for a couple of years and I just ordered a new set of these today from Stuart McDonald, but suffice it to say that they are just about indispensable for doing this. Uh, there's a uh, thing about doing a bound fingerboard that's different than an unbound fingerboard. With a bound fingerboard you have the binding over the end of the fret slot. So the fret slots are not exposed on the ends of the guitar neck. So the fret tang has to be nipped back um, somewhere around nearly almost an eighth of an inch back from the ends of the fingerboard. And it's what's called a recess, a recessed tang. So these tang nippers grab a hold of this little end here and these are getting kind of dull, so I'm going to go over there and nip this off over my trash can so that it falls into the trash. Here, heard it nip off there, and now my tang is nipped off. So the next thing I've got to do is take a file and file away that little bit of the tang that's still left there because even good tang nippers will not take all of the tang off. So. You take a little file, I like using this one, this three-corner file I got from Stuart McDonald, and I put it on a nice flat surface and finish filing off that piece of tank so it's perfectly flush where the end of my fret wire is going to go over the binding. It's got to be flush. So I'm going to smooth that out. Now, now that I've smoothed that out, the other thing that I need to do is go ahead and do some pre-dressing on this fret end because otherwise these ends are going to be very hard to do once this gets tacked on here. So <clears throat> what I need to do is go over this with a file on the edges get rid of some of the roughness that's there. Ultimately, you get rid of all of it when I do the dressing. But we're going to go ahead and do, get rid of some of this now because it sure is easy to 
get to while it's off the guitar. So now that that's smoothed out, about where I need it to be, I'm going to now take this fret wire with the tang nipped off and I'm going to put it in the slot. I'm going to watch it very, very closely to about how far it, away it needs to be from the edge over here. And I know you can't see this, but I'm watching. What I'm doing is I'm, by eye, I am measuring the distance that this fret end needs to be from the edge of the fingerboard. By the way, I'm cutting my fret ends closer in than the original frets were because the original frets, in my opinion, were just hanging out there just a little too far. And uh, for better comfort, I like having my fret ends on a bound fingerboard a little further in. Of course, you can go in pretty far because the fingerboard doesn't start, uh, you know, right all the way to the edge of the of the of the neck here. It goes the actual rosewood fingerboard itself, you know, ends, and that's the string is inside of that. So you're not going to worry about the string slipping off if you come too far in with the uh, with the end bevel. So I take my fret nippers, now that I've got it right where it needs to be in relation to the other end, I take my fret nippers and right up against the binding on the opposite side is where I'm going to nip this one, right there. And there it goes. Now I've got me another rough end. That end's got to be filed flat. Here we go, filing that down, nice and flat, and we'll look at it and see, check it and make sure it's going flat on me. Now I'll go ahead and dip this thing off, catch it in this little groove thing here. over my trash can once again nip this end off yep. now with that cut off I'll take my file again and file off flush what is left of that tank under that fret crown. And now I've got a flush crown underneath there. And then again, I'm gonna dress, pre-dress the edges a little bit on this. Just get those corners a little bit rounded, just a little bit. You don't wanna reshape it very much. You wanna leave it as square as you can. But you want to take some of that sharp edge off of there because it's really hard to get to when you've got the fret already tapped in and set. Now I'm going to do a little pre-setting here. I'm going to look at my, my fret size and see if it's just right for that particular uh, fret slot. I'm working right now on... Uh, Fret number six, and I'm checking it by eye. When you do this a long time, you get used to doing it by eye. Your eye sort of trained to see if you've got the right distance uh, from end to end. A lot of trial and error involved in this. But uh, you develop a skill for it eventually. So I'm looking at the ends of my fret. Uh, my fret ends, my crowns, and they are right where they need to be. They are about square with where the others are. And as you, as you probably already know, the frets get wider as you go further up the fingerboard. So they get a little bit wider and a little bit wider, and that's why each one has to be measured off in its respective area. Then I'm going to take some. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm going to take uh, my fret nippers. And the next thing I have to do is crimp down the 
ends of these crowns. Now here's the reason why I have to do that. Because these uh, bound fingerboards, quite often the binding, where the, where the wood ends and the binding begins at the, at the edge, the binding tends to go down. It tends to be slightly lower than the wood itself. It seems to, to taper off. On this particular fingerboard there's a considerable drop. Sometimes it's it's right flush with it. Other times, like on a lot of Martin guitars, I find that it's very flush. But on this guitar, it is really dropping off on the edges. It, uh, it goes down considerably. And what happens is, if you don't uh, uh, knock down these fret ends to where they're against, they're down and they're, they're, they're flush against those that binding on the ends, if you don't do that, and then when you're playing the guitar one day a string will slip off and it'll get caught underneath the fret end and your like your E string will get caught under there and uh, you'll wonder what happened to your string did I break a string you know you're playing your guitar and all of a sudden the string is not there and then you look down at your guitar neck and you find that it's it's caught underneath the fret end and you have to bring it up and put it back on the guitar well you want to avoid that happening but also, they need to be flush anyway because you don't want dirt and, and stuff getting underneath that, that end of that fret on your, uh, on your binding. You take this little tapper and you just tap on these ends just slight, ever so slightly enough until you can visually see it begin to bend down slightly. And uh, this doesn't hurt the steel. I'm using a brass end of this and it doesn't hurt the steel at all. It doesn't make any marks in the uh, in the crown. And now I'm just doing both ends. Just tap them down just a little bit so that they crimp uh, downward. I don't know how well you can you can see that but the uh, ends of that now are crimped down nicely like they need to be. Then I'm going to take some liquid high glue, which is what I like to use to glue frets in. For one thing, if I ever have to remove them for any reason, I can simply heat the frets up and the glue uh, melts and becomes liquefied and I can pull the fret out that easily. I don't use super glue with, with frets. I think that's a, a total overkill and unnecessary and very messy and, and super glue get, tends to get on things and eat finish and I don't mess with super glue when it comes to frets. And this bottle's getting a little bit low, but here it comes. Alright, glue up. I've got always having water nearby and ready to wipe off excess. So now I set my fret in there. And it's set. I felt it go into the slot. And again, I'm checking to make sure that I'm lined up. If I need to line it up a little bit, I'll just tap it whatever end needs to go whichever direction. And now I'll take my plastic mallet, tap it in. And you can't beat a good old-fashioned tap in. I don't like using a fret press. I have one and I don't use it. I like using a, a hammer. There it goes. All right, a little bit of glue gets on the hammer. I have to keep that off. And first of all, I wipe off the excess of the glue that's there. And then I take a wet paper towel and get the rest off so I don't leave any glue residue on the fingerboard. And wipe this off. So, and there it is. I have a fret that is uh, crimped down on the ends. It's the right size for uh, that slot at that position on the fingerboard. And uh, a guitar string won't get caught under it. Um, and that's what's involved in just doing one fret. Now that's all we've done is one fret on this uh, bound fingerboard. And we're going to come back over this when we get them all glued in. We're going to come back over this and we're going to level them. 
and then we're going to bevel them. So the ends of these are not yet dressed and they they're still need to be leveled even though they're put in there and measured off as, as best as you can and, and the fingerboard itself is level. There still will be some unevenness. You always have to level frets and then you have to recrown them after you level them. So that's also very involved in a fret job. So this is one of the reasons why we have to charge more for a bound fingerboard because you don't just put frets in there and clip the ends off. You have to um, uh, size each one for each uh, slot and then you have to, to clip the ends off and recess the tangs and so forth. It's very involved. I just wanted you to know what's involved in doing one fret on a bound fingerboard. A little closer shot here for you holding the camera. But you see what these frets look like. Still unfinished, but they're looking pretty good. Lined up with the binding pretty nicely. And the ends of the crowns are flush against the binding. And here's another view of a piece of fret wire I'm getting ready to put in. Just uh, clip this one off. So the tangs are, the end of the tang is clipped off so that the fret wire can recess inside the binding. And then they're tapped down so that they lay flush against the binding at the ends so that there's no gap under the fret end. It's very important. And then we'll also get into dressing these. I thought I'd go ahead and put this video out now. But it takes a while. It takes hours. Uh, nearly, a, nearly an all-day job from stripping the frets to putting the new frets in. I'd say about one and a half days to do a bound fingerboard like this and to do it right. 